2016, we did a, we call them rockin' lots. There's a lot at the, at the restaurant that I own called the Elevation, which is uh, just on the golf course, Minot Country Club. And we have a little parking lot. We put a stage up there and we had some uh, arena rock style cover band up there. And we had like 400 people there. And that was great for that little, just, I mean, it was, little, it was like the employee parking lot. We didn't even use the whole parking lot. So the employee like and we did it again the next year after that. And then we moved and got a bigger stage and a bigger parking lot after that. So we've been working on this, or I've been working on this myself in the organization since 2016. I don't know if it was just the people in that area that liked it the most, uh, but it was always packed. It was always a blast. It was a good night. I mean, who doesn't like good music outdoors, right? It made sense, and I mean, it was anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 people, if I'm not mistaken. So, good times at the Elevation parking lot. And, you know, Rockin' Lot was great, it just got too big for the parking lot. So then that next phase is growing it into a larger area. And then more bands, and then, you know, obviously this last year we wanted to add a whole national act lineup and life and circumstances just didn't allow it to occur. My name is Wade Regeer. I uh, have been the, I guess you'd say, the assistant technical logistics uh, behind the scenes production guy for uh, quite, a, quite a bit, actually quite a long time. Uh, originally, we, Mike and, and Elevation were the biggest sponsors of the hockey program. Um, and a couple times where we were able to get a larger trade out, it incorporated us help, either helping with the original rock in the lot where we were helping set up the stage to security. Um, and being the coach, I was in charge of coordinating, make sure the guys would show up and did different things. And along the way, I learned how the process worked, uh, especially with the staging stuff. Um, and then it led to being actually hired this summer where I was basically helping with logistics and planning uh, the production side and coordinating uh, both the DAC Jam lights and then out leading up to the big DAC Jam. Rock in the Lot was my, my first one. I mean, first original Rock the Lot, I was a, came in as a, as a patron and then being able to see the big stage come in with the guys coming out of Minneapolis and um, seeing the very large scale stage which the big performers put on. And uh, um, basically ever since I've been tied from when it was a rock in the lot to DAC Jam and of course the, the big DAC Jam here in my life. The way we do things is a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time so we don't overextend ourselves and get too far deep into anything and then learn the process, learn the area, learn the logistics of it, learn the festival goer, learn the ticket buyer around here. So there's never been an unsuccessful DAC jam. Have we had a DAC jam this last year? Was it unsuccessful? Well, we didn't have it. It's not unsuccessful. We've learned a lot. We learned a lot about the way life is now, the way the uncertainty of things can change in 24 hours. So we, that's also a thing we are adapting to and learning from a DAC jam and the music industry here in America. So what's your definition of successful? Is everybody thinks successful has to be you making millions of dollars? This is a business. It takes years to build. Not, it's not like a one-time event and then bam, you do it. That's why we started in 2016 with the whole plan of getting to where we're at now. And then now we just, the world is different. So we have to adapt to the world and make it easier and better for festival goers, music lovers, and experienced people, they get to this pro kind of product that we're, that we're putting out. I'm good friends with Mike and Tanya, and Ashley, she's like, you need to be part of this, you know, because she was, you know, founding member part of the first year, and she's like, you need to do this, and so followed their lead and jumped on in. The first events I would have attended would have been Rock in the Lot, when it was originally held at Elevation, and then the, when Dak Jam moved to the University parking lot was there. It was awesome. It was fantastic to see. I mean, the, the setup was so cool. Live music, outdoors, um, cold beverages. <laughs> um, that's something that's high on my list of activities to do is if there's live music, outdoors, um, hanging with friends in just a space where you, everybody can have fun. Um, it was awesome. I, I thought it was a great add to mine it so it was really excited to see what the next version of Dak Jam was going to be. I feel like Rock and Lot was just the phase 
building up to Dag Jam. Both, all the Rock and Lots were great. And I would say 2019 was successful in what we were intending it to be, other than the rain and weather. Because again, when it's cold, I understand people don't want to be outside for the most part. Um, and I do feel like 2021 was going to be like the it year, but unfortunately there was situations that were out of our control that, you know, it was a blow to all of us. It's taking those steps every time. So, you know, we were this, la this last act jam that we did, that we got canceled the last, at the last minute. We had to, we were at the, the national, national artists level. Now we're at that level to where we need to take it and get our experiences and our music experiences to this area or this part of the country. We've been taking gradual steps every year. Even though we're in a pandemic, we are adapting to it. Unfortunately, these things take a little bit longer than we like, but I think we're in a good, we're a very good spot going forward for 2022, how we're gonna be doing things.